of your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I speak. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was placed upon him. By his stripes, you are healed. And I speak in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, healing to your body, health to your being to your soul, spirit and body, be thou made whole. Depression must go, sickness must go, defeat must go, victory is here, 
Healing is here. Help is here. Breakthrough is here. Now, in the name of Jesus, if you receive it, give the Lord a mighty praise today. Together, let us reason together and hear one another. You don't understand what you've not experienced. I don't understand what I've not experienced, but we can sit down and listen to one another and God can give us answers for our nation. How many of you believe? And so I'll be, and we're going to have some of the greatest. We're partnering with our dear friend, Bishop Harry Jackson from Washington, D.C., who has uh, a tremendous ministry of reconciliation. And we, we, are, uh, we are thrilled to be able to host that right here at Free Chapel coming in the month of March. So you don't want to miss that. Pray for us. Pray that God will really speak and do something powerful. I want you to open your Bibles with me for just a few moments. And I want to go first to the book of uh, Joel, the Old Testament, the book of Joel. You can turn to 2 Kings chapter 8, and I'll meet you in 2 Kings chapter 8. But I want to remind you that the whole theme of this fast is return unto me from Joel chapter 2. This is what he says in verse 12. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all of your heart with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. Watch this. For he is gracious and merciful. He relents or changes his mind from doing harm or bringing judgment. Who knows if he will not relent or change his mind and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering. This speaks of the communion meal, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. God. Now I want you to look with me. He said, return to me. And you can do that through fasting and prayer. But notice this story in 2 Kings chapter 8. Verse 3, it came to pass at the end of seven years, the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. She went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Verse 6 says, and when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appeared or appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers, all the proceeds of the land from the day that she left the land until now. Seven years she left, but when she came back, she got back what she lost. She got her house back. She got her land back. But then the king was so gracious, was so merciful, that instead of giving any judgment for her leaving, he turned around and left her even more blessing and said, give her all the profits that the land produced the seven years she was gone. How many of you would like to go off on vacation and come back and have more than you had when you left? <laughs> seven years, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Very simple message today. It's not going to take me long to preach it. They were shocked. They beat the Baptist to the buffet in the first service. I'm going to tell you, they did. They were shocked this morning at how long I preached. They didn't think it. They're seeing miracles off of the fast already. <laughs> but I want to preach to you a principle. It's not some great, but this is a principle that will work. Anytime you find a Bible principle, it will work in every area of your life. And this is a principle that I've never shared before that I want you to get a hold of. If you're going to get back what you lost, you've got to go back to what you left. If you've got leaving on your mind, you've got losing in your destiny. Because the principle that I'm giving you is this. If you leave something, you lose something. You cannot leave something without losing something. And if you want to get back something you've lost, you've got to go back to what or who you left. You can't expect to have the benefits of a company or a corporation if you leave that company. If you leave the company, you lose the benefits of that company. You lose the paycheck, the benefits of insurance. You lose the benefits if you leave the company. When you leave the church, you lose the benefits. When you leave the Word, when you leave an intimate life of consecration, dedication, sanctification unto God, you cannot leave without losing. If you leave something, you lose something. When you leave something that used to work, you lose something. And the only way to get back what you lost is to go back to what you left. That's the only way. 
If we leave, if we lose our health, listen to me carefully, consider this, this principle in your, in, in your health, your physical health. You cannot leave good eating habits, exercise, sleeping. You cannot leave that principle for a long time and not lose your health. If you leave the principle of good eating habits, and you can splurge, you can go, but, but if, in general, if you lose that habit of good eating and exercise and taking care of yourself, it's a matter of time before you lose your health. The good news is, if you want to get what you lost, go back to what you left, and it'll work out. The only way to get back what you lost is to go back to what you left. As a society, we have left morality, we have left modesty, we have left the fear of God, and we have lost the fear of God. We have lost the smile of God. If we want what we lost, we've got to go back to what we left. You cannot leave holiness and not lose godliness. You cannot leave separation and not lose distinction. When we leave something, we lose something. You cannot leave the principles, the precepts of God's word and not lose. It may take a while to catch up with you, but when you leave, you lose. And if we're going to get back what we've lost, we've got to return to what we left. If you've lost joy, return to praise. Now, you can stay depressed if you want to. God will let you stay in your down condition all you want. But if you have lost joy, return to praise. If you have lost victory, return to the Word. Return to seeking God. You can't leave the fear of God and expect to have the smile of God. You can't leave the prayer room without losing some things in your life. Do you have a prayer life? I know you've got an internet life. I know you've got a Netflix life. I know you've got an HBO life. I know you've got a sports life. Do you have a prayer life? Because you cannot leave a prayer life and not lose. And if you want to get back what you lost, you've got to go back to what you left. It's costing you something to not be close to God. If you leave consecration, if you leave dedication, if you leave sanctification and standards and purity, if you leave that, you can get by with it for a while, but you cannot leave without losing. And if you want to get back what you lost, you got to go back to what you left. The only reason that Samson lost power is because he left purity. When he left purity, he lost power because power only comes. Purity produces power. He kept his vows. He had power. He left his vows to God. I won't cut my hair. I won't eat dead things. I won't touch certain things. I won't drink wine. That was his vows to God. And when he left his vows, he lost his power. When he left what he vowed to do, God left what he promised to do in his life. And if you leave the principles and the precepts of God, it's a matter of time before you lose his presence. You cannot consistently keep leaving and thinking that you will not lose. The curse of this generation is it wants, it wants back what it lost, but it doesn't want to go back to what it left. And we have left prayer, we have left consecration, we have left brokenness, we have left absolute selling out, taking up our cross, living for Christ, not things, not the pleasures of the world. We live for Jesus. And if we want the joy that comes from that, we got to go back to what we left and we'll get back what we lost. Because money don't make you happy. Fame doesn't make you happy. Popularity and followers on the internet doesn't make you somebody. Jesus makes you somebody. Jesus fills you with joy. Jesus fills you with peace. Jesus fills you with purpose. Nobody can afford to lose the presence of God. 
Samson lost his vision. He lost his liberty. He lost his usefulness to God. He lost his reputation. And he woke up one day and he wished not the spirit had departed. He lost because he left. What did he leave? He left his consecration. He left his commitment. He left his purity. Have you left the place of purity? You're losing. Nobody may not know what you're doing, but God sees it. And if you lose the principle and concept of purity, you lose that power in your prayer life and in your walk with God. If you leave, you lose. If you come back, you get back. In your marriage, you can't leave off communication and spending time with one another. If you leave spending time with one another, then you're going to lose intimacy. If you leave, leave communicating with one another, you're going to leave, lose a precious family. If you leave, you lose. If you come back, you get back. If you return to what you left, you can recover what you lost. This woman in 2 Kings chapter 8 was told by the prophet to leave because a famine was coming and she left for seven years. And after seven years, she came back and noticed the key to the story. If you want to get back what you lost, because when she left, she gave up her house, she gave up her farm, she gave up everything and she left. She comes back seven years later, but the first person she goes to see is the king. If you want to get back what you lost, you've got to go back to the king. You've got to come back to the king in this brand new year. You've got to come back to him and bow your knee and confess him as Lord and surrender your life to him. Some of you have lost so much and you keep losing and you think you can make a success out of sin and you can't. As long as you leave Jesus and leave his word and leave the principles and concepts of consecration, purity, holiness, and, and being set apart by God for his purpose, when you leave that, you lose all the benefits that come with that. The key is if you're going to come back, you've got to come back to the king. I want what I lost, but I don't want to return to what I left is the cry of this generation. I want that feeling I used to have. I want that joy I used to have. I want the tears. I want the spirit. I want the anointing. I want to feel God like I used to feel him. But I don't want to go back to what I left. Because that was when I was on fire for God. That was when I was consecrated. That was when I was sold out. We're living, many people are living at a low level of spirituality. It's called the curse of lukewarmness. And many in the church are under it. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, you left. If you leave, you're going to lose. And he said, you left your first love. And then notice what they lose. And he says, repent or I will come and I will take your candlestick. The Lord of the candlestick said that if you leave me as your first love, it's a matter of time before I take your fire. I take your passion. I take the light. All God has to do to bring judgment in your life is turn the lights out. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You can't even catch your next breath without him. And when you leave, when you leave, he, he said, you have left your first love. And when you do, it's a matter of time before you lose the candlestick, the illumination of God's purpose and plan for your life. Oh, to see and to hear and to have understanding and revelation of God's will for your life is the greatest thing. And you can lose that. He said, you've lost your first love. That's the bad thing. But the good news is if you'll come back to what you left, you can get back what you lost. You can get your fire back. You can get your praise back. You can get your tears back. You can get your joy back. You can get your, your vision back. You can see again. In business, those of you in business in this room and listening to me, wherever you're listening at any of our campuses or around the world, 
business people understand this principle. If they start seeing their sales go down, if they start seeing the orders stop coming in, they'll call all their executives into a meeting somewhere. And they'll gather them together and they'll say, something's wrong, something's off. We used to do this, somebody will say. We used to do that. And, and bottom line, many times it comes down to customer service. Here's the principle. If you leave the principle of people for profit, you're going to always lose. Serve people well and profit will always come. But so many times we get caught up and, and just cutting this and cutting that and we lose the, the principle of people and we trade the principle of people for profit. If you leave off principles and precepts, you're going to lose something. In Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son left the father's house. Now watch this. If you leave, you lose. He left a father and the farm and the produce of the farm and the blessings and the goodness of the father, the love of the father. He left it. And when he left it, he didn't even know he lost. He never, the, the astonishing part of this story, as I read it again this week, is he never thought he would lose. He thought he could leave the father and the father's house and not lose. And it's the same old lie Satan is telling millions of people now. You can leave the father. You can leave the father's house. And he didn't even think he would lose. Look at all I got. I got all this money. And look out here. I'm having parties. And, and it may take a while. It may take a while. He's, he's smoking weed. He, 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 he's backing it up in the club. He's paying for all the drinks. He, 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 he's, he's he, getting turned. Oh, this is so fun. I hadn't lost nothing. It might take a minute, but I promise you the principle will work. If you leave the father's house, you're going to lose something. And it's a matter of time before you end up in the pig pen, broke and down and tore up from the floor up and messed up. But oh, here's the good news. The father's still waiting, saying, come back, come back. If you'll come back to what you left, you can get back what you lost. I need somebody who's experienced it to give God a great shout of praise today that we can come back because he's plenteous in, in mercy. Oh, he's plenteous in mercy. Wow. Nobody can leave righteousness. Nobody can leave Godliness and not lose. It may take a while. He left and he lost and so will you. Some of you are on a, on a downward trend. He lost his dignity. He lost the farm. He lost all the produce. He's eating pig slop. Some people think they can leave the farm and still get the crops. You'll keep losing till you return to what you left. Thank God that we're allowed to come back. And sometimes you don't know you've left until you lost. <laughs> and sometimes God has to send a wake up call and let us lose to remind us that we lost our consecration to him. When you first started that business, you were on your knees seeking God, fasting and praying, but now you don't need it. I was preaching to my own self. When I first came to this church, every sermon was a crisis. I still don't know how to preach. Any, any preacher who ever comes to you and says, give me the microphone. I'd love to get up in front of those people. You don't... Oh, somebody who's really called always has this, somebody else ought to be doing this. Somebody who really knows what they're doing. I still get a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach every Sunday morning. I shouldn't tell people this. <laughs> I tremble and I, 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 if I let it, my natural fear and insecurity would absolutely overcome me. And I have to constantly go back and remember that when I'm weak, he's strong. 
And I, I have not come this far to leave the power of God. If we leave the Holy Spirit, man, I feel like preaching. The modern church, the modern church has lost some things. We've lost miracles, signs, and wonders. We've lost the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We've lost radical praise and faith and, and, and unbelief has, has taken over many. And the reason that we've lost is because we left the message of Acts chapter 2. Let's go back to what we left. Let's tell people there's power in the Holy Spirit. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power to pray in a heavenly language. And if we'll go back to what we left, we'll He'll get back what we lost. He'll heal today. He'll deliver today. He'll set drug addicts free, alcoholics free today. I started out with the Holy Spirit as my partner in this church. And if I leave him, I'll lose his power and precious anointing. And you will too. The curse of the church today is many Christians have lost their joy. You're a joyless Christian. Return to praise. Stop grieving. Stop whining. Stop complaining and put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and throw your hands up and declare God is good because gratitude is the attitude for breakthrough. And if you get a grateful heart, God will break through in your circumstance. Everybody take a praise break and shout the roof off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm coming back. Return unto me. And I will return unto you if you return unto me. God is guaranteed reception if you come back. Did you hear me, backslider? You're sitting there in a hotel room with Jack Daniels and you're drinking yourself silly. And you don't know why you turned this preacher on, but I just had the Lord interrupt regular scheduled programming just for you to tell you that if you'll come back to him, if you'll come back to the one that you left, you can get back what you lost. You can feel the trembling lips. You can feel the fire and the power of God again like you used to feel when you were in relationship with God. You can have it back. Oh, I feel the Lord in this place today. David, I close with this. I told you. Eleven fifty-seven. <laughs> Write it down. Put it on your notes. Put an asteroid beside it, because you may never see that. We may never pass this way again. But you're having a miracle right now. <laughs> David lost the the Ark of the Covenant. He lost the presence of God, left it at Obed-Edom's house. And for 18 months, he went without it. And what's interesting is he never wrote a song in that 18 months. The psalmist, the singer, the worshiper lost. When he lost the presence of God, he lost his song. He lost the music in his life. Some of you have lost the music in your life. You've lost your song. Oh, you got stuff. When are we going to ever learn that stuff is not enough? All you got is a big old house to walk through. It's nice, thank God for it. But if that is your life, if that is all, life only uh, exists for the possession of things, when you get it, it's not enough. The Bible said he lost his song for 18 months, but he went and retrieved the Ark of the Covenant and brought it back, I love it, with singing, with music, and with dancing. With gladness. Put it up. 
the instruments. See, he got all the, he got his song back. Some of you have lost your song and the beginning of a brand new year. I'm calling you back to the King because in the story that I read in second Kings eight, the woman, when she came back to the King and asked for, for, for restoration, the Bible said he commanded that she be given her house, her field, and so much more. And I want to I end with reading Joel chapter 2 one more time because you might have missed it. Return unto me, verse 13. Rend your heart, not your garment. Return to the Lord your God. Watch this. I don't know what you've heard about God, but I want you to see Him now poised to do this. For He is gracious. Please come back. Please. He's gracious. He's merciful. Watch this. It gets even better. Slow to anger. You thought he was mad and hated you. He's, he, he's slow to anger. And of, listen to these words. You don't hear these words. Religion don't teach you these words about God. God is mean. God is angry. God is, God is furious. No, no, no. He is of great kindness to anyone who returns to him. He changes his mind from allowing judgment that you deserve to hit you. And then the last part says this. Who knows? If you fast and pray and run back to the king, instead of giving you what you deserve, he'll leave a blessing behind him. There it is, the communion table. His body and his blood. Because... He loves you and he's ready to pardon you. He's ready. If you're tired of losing, if you'll go back to what and who you left, you'll get back what you lost because he's so kind. Because like in the story of the prodigal son, when the son started coming home, the father ran, ran. The father's ready to run. He's not angry at you. He's slow to anger. Plenteous in mercy. And he's ready for you to come and return to him. This year, And if you'll return to what you left, He'll restore what you lost. Everyone in this room and in every campus, just stand to your feet, please. No one moving, please. Now, I, I, I sense God's presence here in a powerful way today. Particularly right here in Gainesville, at every campus, but right here in Gainesville, there is a, a voice going out that's inside of my voice that is the king calling the backslider home. You are not hearing this sermon by accident. This is a word from the Lord for you personally. And if you'll return to your first love, the lights are going to come back on. He'll give you the candlestick back. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this room today and you'd say, Pastor Franklin, pray for me. I know I'm far from God. That old song says, I wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. The paths of sin, too long I trod, but now I'm coming home. Coming home, never more to roam. Open wide the arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. And if you're under the sound of my voice right now and you know you're backslid far from God and you want to get right with God, you want to come back to what you left so you can recover what you lost. Peace, 
forgiveness, love, fellowship with the Father. Pray for me, Pastor. I want to get right with God. If that's you, boldly raise your hand right where you're standing. God sees those hands all over this room. Beautiful. There they are. There they are. There they are. Wonderful. 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 Keep raising them. Keep raising them. Many, many hands. Will you trust me? If you're in overflow, will you trust me? Every campus, if you lifted that hand, and even if you didn't, and you feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit, humble yourself. Get out of that seat and walk down that aisle and come stand right down here. Come stand right down here. I'm going to wait on you. Come quickly. Don't wait on anybody. Don't let a voice in your head talk you out of it. Don't negotiate your way out of it. Just obey. Obedience. Obedience is all God's asking of you. He's provided a meal that can stop judgment and release the blessing. Come on. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Church, rejoice. This is what we pray and fast for. Here comes the prodigal sons. Here comes the prodigal daughters. Here comes those that have lost so much. You've lost so much. But it's not too late to come back to what you left and you can recover what you lost. Return unto me, says the Lord. Come on, come on, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming. Clap your hands and rejoice. They're coming, they're coming. The prodigal's coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Those of you watching by television, go to the phone and dial the number that's on the screen. You can come back to the Lord. That can be your point of contact. Jesus will never turn you away. He'll never say, no, you're not welcome here. He loves you. He's waiting. He's slow to anger. He's not angry with you. He loves you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. In a moment, Jonathan's going to come and they can take this. And he's going to sing this song. And we're going to lift our hands because it, it expresses how we feel as we're fasting. Y'all are still fasting, aren't you? Are you still fasting? It says, I'm coming back. And that's good that these people who, 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 who've been away from the Lord have come back. But all the church, including the pastor, during these seasons of fasting are returning back to what we left and saying restore what we lost give me a fresh anointing give me my tears back give me my fear back give me my ears back let me hear your voice let me feel my emotions again about you I appreciate how excited I got last night as the Atlanta Falcons won that game I was so excited nothing wrong with that but I don't want my best emotions to be for a ball game I want my best emotions to be for Jesus so those of you down front pray this prayer everybody in the church lift your voice at every campus and say these words Lord Jesus I give you my life I surrender completely to your will I'm coming back to the king, to the one that I left, because I can't leave without losing. So I come back to the one I left to get back what I lost. And you are gracious. You restore me, spirit, soul, and body. Restore my health, restore my joy, restore my peace, restore my soul. I receive it today. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Now lift your voice and praise Him. Let's sing this song. Lift your hands, church, and sing it as a prayer. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. Would you lift your hands and sing it, church? It's all about I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it.
need a breakthrough in your family, raise your hand if you need a breakthrough in your family. I dare you to do, if, if we leave the precept of they shall lay hands and then they shall recover, we lose that blessing. And it's not just physical healing, but God can heal families and homes. So I want you to reach over and lay your hand on somebody's shoulder and I want you to go old school for the next few moments and they're gonna sing this song again. And when they do, I want you to decree that whatever the enemy has stolen from that home, that whatever the enemy has taken, God is going to cause restoration and recovery and reception back to what was lost in that family. In Jesus' name, see you now. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Lord. So I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Restore. It's all Restore it. families. Restore marriages. Restore sons and daughters. Restore families. His blood. 
of you who prayed down front we've got some free gifts we want to give you and our altar team are ready to do that I love this church the way that is seeking God fasting and praying Wednesday night prayer and praise Dr. Rutland's going to be sharing I can't wait to hear what he's going to say may the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine on you be gracious unto you lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and breakthroughs in 2017 like you never dreamed in Jesus name I'd love to shake your hand and say hello at the at the front door God bless you as you step into a brand new week I want to encourage you and remind you to check out freechapel.org as well as jensenfranklin.org and you'll find all the available resources that will help encourage you and equip you throughout the week and the remainder of this fast as you seek God with all of your heart. But then finally, I do wanna remind you once more about our annual One Marriage Conference coming up February the 10th through the 11th with special guests Robert and Debbie Morris from Gateway Church in Texas. A phenomenal opportunity for all spouses and individuals, singles alike, to come and just gain a great knowledge of godly relationships and growing your relationship with Christ. But make sure you check out jensenfranklin.org as well as freechapel.org and then utilize the online campus uh, webpage and submit your prayer request because we have a team ready and available to pray with you all throughout the week. We love you so much. We're thrilled that you're here. God bless you and we'll see you next Sunday morning.